Welcome friends to this seventh episode in my vlog series. Um, I was disorganized last time, I'm even more disorganized this time and like really this is really off the cuff but pretty much there's a heap of videos I want to do but I realized that I need to do more filming, write some scripts and do some more research to get them done. So I'm going to plan, I'm planning on having a massive production weekend this weekend and get all that sort of sorted so I can just um, line them all up for you <laughs> and I'm not sort of doing this random <laughs> make it up as I go along thing which is probably actually what you're meant to do with a vlog but I'm doing it different okay I'm hoping this is going to be really interesting anyway even though it's really off the cuff but pretty much I keep a lot of uh, digital files like images and videos and things like that as reference mainly because I don't trust my poor brain to sort of remember all these things um, so I have all these folders of stuff that I've just sort of grabbed and this collection from my hard drive uh, actually relates back to something I did on Flickr which I was calling the Modern Ephemera Society. Now if you know, if you don't know what ephemera is, a quick definition, it's sort of printed matter that's not, not easy to categorize. So it's not books, it's not magazines, but it's stuff like bus tickets or postcards or exhibition catalogues or just all the sort of funny little print bits of printed matter that it's just really hard to sort of categorize. There's quite a few ephemera societies around and they have sort of meets where people get together and buy and swap bits of ephemera. Uh, and they're really, they're quite fun because you'll go and there'll be like people with stands just full of boxes of bus tickets. <laughs> you know, or like, you know, postcards of seaside fairs or something like that. Um, I went to one in London and there's a ephemera society that hold regular meets around Bloomsbury and Holborn. You know, England's obviously got a long history of printed material that a lot of the material was from an era that I didn't really have a connection to and wasn't so interested. It was still interesting going through, but I, I wanted sort of the more recent history 20s, 30s, 50s onwards uh, and actually if you go to a ephemera fair in Melbourne they tend to be more of that era. I was doing a series of print-on-demand books a few years ago and I was going to do one called Modern Ephemera which was going to just pull lots of material from that Modern Ephemera Society group on Flickr. But I only really got as far as photographing my own sort of collection <laughs> and the book never happened. I don't know if it will happen. But uh, this video is happening and I'm showing you some of the stuff I collected. Uh, so I'm hoping it'll still be really interesting even though I've sort of made this up in the last 24 hours. <laughs> That's what you're meant to do with vlogs, isn't it? It's not too spontaneous. So this is my collection of modern ephemera and I'll just sort of talk over the top. Next time we'll have proper moving footage, I promise, not just me talking over the top of stills. Yeah, so this first postcard is by a guy called Mark Pawson and he was like super prolific during the 2000s. I'm not sure, I haven't checked up to see. I, I had a quick look at his website and it's still there so I assume he's still doing lots of work. Uh, but he was big into Gokko printing, which if you don't know what Gokko printing is, it's there was a company in Japan that manufactured photocopiers and they bought out this home screen printing kit. I had one for a while and then I, I told my mum to look after it and she lost it. I don't know where it is. But it's fab. It's it's super non-messy compared to like regular screen printing. The only drawback is that you have like a tiny little sort of uh, window that you can print into, sort of postcard size, maybe a bit larger. Uh, so. This was ideal for Mark Paulson, he just churned out all these Gokko printed cards such as this one and this one for Tati Divine, which is their door sign and there was one that said closed as well. The printing is just beautiful, I love these things. This next couple of things that were sort of with the face magazine, I think like they, when they were sort of, maybe they were freaking out and decided they had to give things away to people. So. This issue had like a little um, set of stickers with a subscription special at the bottom and then they had some wipes for some bizarre reason. I, this is really funny, I really like them. I've kept them, they're probably not very fresh now are they? I'm never going to open them so that's alright. 
The chemistry gallery in London has just been continually churning out really amazing exhibitions. There's not many gallery spaces dedicated to graphic design and illustration really when you think about it. So as small as it is, they pack in a lot of really awesome exhibitions. And the flyers are lovely too. I collected loads of them. I, I particularly liked this one and this next one by for an experimental jet set exhibition was pretty special. I grabbed a whole heap of them thinking, oh my god, they might be collectible. Well, I collected them. Okay, this is a sticker that I pulled off a post in King's Cross. I think when I was living there, uh, there was a very scatty time in my life living in King's Cross. Scott King is an art director who became well known for working on ID magazine and then later Sleaze Nation and then he sort of just switched over to becoming just sort of an artist. I say just an artist, like he, he sort of doesn't do so much uh, commercial work anymore, it's all sort of art based. But one of the art pieces he did, I think this was in collaboration with someone, I'm not sure, under the name Crash was all these crazy stickers that were posted up around King's Cross and some, like you'd go to some derelict building and the, the door would just be smothered in them and they're all different saying all sorts of crazy different things. I'd love to have a collection of them all. This is just a few random bits and pieces. The first one is like a bookmark that was produced by Tate Britons for a Bridget Riley exhibition and I doubt she actually did anything that was actually a bookmark. But it's nice to be able to have a little piece of Bridget Riley sort of to carry around. It's pretty special. Um, then we have a flyer for, I think this was the tournament, like a nightclub in Brighton. I lived in Brighton for a while and it's a bit of a student town and there's a really big sort of art and design uh, university. So lots of really ace flyers. I did some flyers for a club night too that weren't nearly as ace as this, but yeah, super fun. And, uh, this is a club that I would never have gone to. <laughs> I wasn't big, like, I went to lots of alternative indie clubs. I didn't really go to proper hardcore or whatever those clubs are. I sound so old man saying that. I was like, oh no, it's a bit rough, that club. I have no idea what that club was like. It just wasn't my sort of music, I guess. But the flyer was what, ace. I thought the flyer was rad. There are lots of clubs like that that I didn't go to, but I collected flyers for. Yeah. Uh, Eat Your Own Ears was um, an organisation, I guess, that put on lots of music events, usually with sort of mini festivals with loads of different bands, and their flyers were always rad, um, and very typographically driven. Uh, a lot like Trevor Jackson's flyers for his nights, uh, which were promoting his record label Output Recordings. So he, he did everything for Output Recordings, he did like the album sleeves and the flyers, and yeah, again, very cool typographic-led stuff, quite exciting. This next postcard was for an exhibition called The Free Library, which was a travelling exhibition that ended up at this tiny little gallery in Shoreditch, which is where I saw it. Uh, but it had like the most amazing contributors, it had like people like Jörg Lenny and Experimental Jet Set and uh, James Goggin, just like this really amazing uh, group of designers and creatives. And the postcard is just really lovely. New Opera is another nightclub that I never went to. <laughs> but I just really loved this flyer. I thought it was really good. Just using the illustrations of fragrances. I have no idea what sort of music that would be. No idea. Now this next piece of ephemera was a sticker used to promote a rally, I think, that was reclaiming the railways. I think it was about renationalizing the railways or something. When was it? It was like way back. Is that 99? <laughs> so yeah, very little progress has been made. But, you know, it's something I would support, I think, renationalizing the railways. And then like we have an actual leaflet that was produced by Transport for London, which I just really loved the graphic on it. Like, like you go to any other city, or I go to any other city now, and I look at sort of the visual identity for the various transport companies, and I'm just like, it's not right, it's not good. And I think I've just been spoiled by London. I was really, I was complaining a lot about Melbourne, especially like how all the text is right ranging. But then I went to Sydney and was like, ah, oh, yeah, Melbourne's better. <laughs> better in terms of the signage and the stuff, the identity for the public transport. I meant. Pilates, P Pilates tech. I don't know how to say that, but it looks it looks really nice. 
if I did Pilates, I'd probably want to do that one. I totally forget who did this flyer. I want to say Yes Studio or A Practice for Everyday Life, uh, but I just can't remember. I just want to show it to you. It's lovely. It's one of the loveliest flyers ever. I forget who did it though. If you know, tell me. This is just a sticker. So, that, you know, this is just one of those things you can buy. It's a piece of ephemera that, you know, it's just in a shop. Anyone can buy it. It's not, you know, by a designer in particular or anything like that. I actually use these on my final folio <laughs> when I finished university. And I, I think I had one on every piece. Because you had to put your name on everything. So I just wrote, hello, my name is Michael. And then the note I got at the end was like, the stickers were a great idea, but a little repetitive. <laughs> yeah, that, that joke walked in quite quickly, I assume. Now here's another bit of just found ephemera. This isn't even something that I bought or anything. I just I think I even probably just found it on the street. Really nice lottery card. It just I don't know, there was just the pattern of the scratch off bits, I don't know what it was. When you travel around a bit you obviously collect stuff, because all these little things you pick up just remind you of where you've been and what was happening and what was going on. So I've got, I've tried to collect as much ephemera from different sorts of countries I've visited as possible. This is uh, for a, it was a great record shop in Tokyo. I'm not sure if it's still there, but it was sort of like in someone's flat. The kitchen was like a working kitchen for the living room, which is like a cafe, and then the bedroom was like a record store with lots of records and stuff like that. And I think they're called Big Love Records now or something like that. I have no idea if the actual place is still there. I think this was designed by Syrup Helsinki. This was a couple of things that I picked up in Berlin. This was a brochure, like a schedule for... I forget what sort of art it was. I think it was performance or music. Anyone from Berlin would probably recognize the name. Uh, but it was a really lovely looking little brochure. Lots of really lovely bits of ephemera to pick up in Berlin actually. I hope it's still like that. I, I really want to go back and check it out. Uh, and this second one was just for a little shop called Star Styling. And it's just photocopied on a piece of card, but so nice. Fashion is dead, <laughs> apparently. I and mean, lastly, these are probably, these are from a completely different era. I'm not even sure when, but I, for a while I really wanted to collect swap cards. I found all these really ace ones that I loved. Uh, I think it was when I went to visit my mom in, in uh, Ballarat where she was staying. We went to this like obscure little junk shop and there were just loads of these really colorful cards. I haven't seen any that I really wanted to collect since then, so it's not really much of a collection. It's pretty much what you can see here. Possibly these are more like something you would find in a London ephemera affair. They're from the Hackney Steam Fair, I think that's what it's called, that pops up in Victoria Gardens sometimes and there's lots of old rides and things like that. And there's one machine where <laughs> it says something like insert coins to see a picture of your future husband. So you can see who your husband's going to be. And you put the money in and this little card comes out with the spooky skeleton guys. <laughs> with hats on. It's like the best thing ever.